Uh, this is the fourth Wednesday of Easter, and uh, we begin with a discussion of Pascal Boyer's book, uh, Religion Explained. We're in chapter two, and he's been presenting us with uh, 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 ontological categories or uh, templates, as he called them earlier. Um, an ontological category. Ontological just means being, a category of being. So when we think of something, we're introduced to a new idea, say a walrus, um, we have an ontological category for it that is animal. And in there, there are a bunch of inferences, like if it has, if we know one has live birth, then we know all walrus have live birth, walruses, or whatever. Um, Anyway, these templates, um, these ontological experiences, ontological categories, actually apply to religious things as well. Um, and uh, the, um, he uses, again, a Venn diagram. Uh, again, you can't read it, but this one is... Um, uh, the proposition that, uh, uh, let's see, some ebony trees recall conversations people hold under their shade. Okay, so um, new information is special ebony trees recall conversations. And uh, an ebony tree is a plant, so uh, the ontological category is plant. And under that... Um, it has a typical shape, grows and dies, is inanimate, needs um, water and soil. Uh, yes, trees are inanimate in that they don't walk around, but the trees outside my window have been blowing quite madly the last few days. So they're not totally uh, without movement. Anyway, the new entry, the special ebony trees, has a typical shape, grows and dies, is inanimate, needs water and soil. But it has this extra little thing that is added to it, um, recalls conversations held under its shade. Um, now, of course, this is a completely fictitious idea, but uh, what he wants to use it for is for us to understand that uh, we have rather precise understanding of rather strange phenomenon uh, in the religious realm because we do have ontological categories that make that possible. And so you have, and he divides this into um, ontological category and then the concept. Um, so you have um, a statement an omniscient God with special cognitive powers. So omniscient God is a person, and uh, plus the specific is special cognitive powers. So you have the ontological category, and then you have the, the special thing that, uh, that comes with. This is, this is religious. This is the way the mind works in relationship to religion. We still categorize things in their ontological way, um, but then we, of course, add to it the, um, um, the concept of, uh, of specialty. So visiting ghosts, also persons, uh, ontological category of person, um, no material body, that's the concept uh, reincarnation, which is a personal thing as per well. So the ontological category is person, uh, no death, and uh, extra body available. So reincarnation means it moves on from one body to another. And zombies, which is also um, ontological category of person, uh, no cognitive functioning. They are just driven forward, as we know, from the movies. Now, um, he has a whole string of, of examples here. Um, uh, 
Okay, so, so for instance, thirsty people disappear. Ontological category person, uh, special biology and physics, meaning um, they're invisible or they disappear. Uh, cologne spirits, there were spirits that drink cologne. Um, um, person, the ontological category, these are persons who uh, drink perfume. If you see a uh, science fiction movie or a speculative fiction movie, you will see, you will see things that have changed. The, but we judge them as we watch them from our ontological categories. So for instance, in um, The Expanse, the proto-molecule is, its ontological category is plant. Uh, unusual for an alien, uh, usually aliens are humanoid, person, but no, in this case, it's a plant. And of course, it has the unusual property of taking over other living species. Um, and the whole expanse is about that proto-molecule. Anyway, he wants us to get into the habit of thinking um, ontological category plus um, the uh, conceptual idea that is different. And so what that means is that, that um, supernatural things have really uh, quite specific um, explanations uh, that are provided, inferred by our, our, our minds. The information contained in the tags contradicts information provided by the ontological category. So the tag or the concept that is added contradicts the ontological category. But we start in our brains with the ontological category, and then we note the exception that the tag or the concept creates. So the uh, ebony trees that recall conversations they are trees first as an ontological category, and then they are trees that remember congregation, conversation. So that's the, uh, the, the contradiction, which is, and so, so we have kind of a precise um, understanding of, um, of uh, supernatural things because we start with very natural uh, ontological categories and explaining them. And then the supernatural stuff takes, uh, and we do this all the time. I mean, uh, we have superheroes in the movies and they, the ontological category is Spider-Man is a person uh, who can obviously throw webs and, and swing. Um, so we, we, accept that definition based on its uh, familiarity as an ontological category, and then it's, at least I'm assuming that's what it is, we'll see um, in the future as he talks about it. Um, uh, religious concepts invariably include information that is counterintuitive relative to the category activated. Now, uh, counterintuitive is, he calls this a technical term. It does not mean strange, inexplicable, funny, exceptional, or extraordinary. What counterintuitive here is not even necessarily surprising. That is, if you have a concept of cologne drinking, invisible persons, and everyone around you talks about um, these visitors, you cannot really register puzzlement or astonishment every single time it's mentioned. Um, anyway, in the same way, Christians and Muslims are not surprised every time someone mentions the possibility that an omnipotent agent is watching them. It just, uh, it, it becomes part of the 
first the agent is a person and uh, um, and the the tag on it the concept is the, that it is omnis omnipotent um, looking over your shoulder all the time so um, what he's saying is is that religious um, religion itself is subject to the way the mind works, which is to pick out the ontological category first, and then within that, the exception that the tag or the concept brings to it. Um, okay, thank you, Pascal Boyer. We will uh, move on from there, continuing in, in chapter two tomorrow. Now we're going to do morning prayer. Um, which is on page 80 in the prayer book, 1979 prayer book. Um, Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. You are risen indeed. Come, let us adore you. Alleluia. And we go on to the... Um, Pasha Nostrum, Christ our Passover. Alleluia, Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us, therefore let us keep the feast. Um, not with the old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Alleluia. Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. So also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Alleluia. Christ being raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by a man came death, by a man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ will all be made alive. Alleluia. Okay, and our psalm uh, is Psalm 119. Um, not the whole psalm, because it's a hugely long one. But we're starting with the Zayin, um, uh, which is um, verse 49, on through three of the... Uh, uh, it's broken up into eight verse uh, segments. So we got uh, Zayn, Heth, and Teth um, through 49 through 71. Remember your word for your servant because you have given me hope. This is my comfort in my trouble that your promise gives me life. The proud have derided me cruelly, but I have not turned from your law. When I remember your judgments of old, O Lord, I take great comfort. I am filled with a burning rage because the wicked of the wicked who forsake your law. Your statutes have been like songs to me wherever I have lived as a stranger. I remember your name in the night, O Lord, and dwell upon your law. This is how it has been with me, because I have kept your commandments. You only are my portion, O Lord. I have promised to keep your words. I entreat you with all my heart. Be merciful to me according to your promise. I have considered my ways and turned my feet toward your decrees. I hasten and do not tarry. I keep your commandments. Um, though the cords of the wicked entangle me, I do not forget your law. At midnight I will rise and give you thanks because of your righteous uh, judgments. I am a companion of all who fear you and of those who keep your commandments. The earth, O Lord, is full of your love. Instruct me in your statutes. O Lord, you have dealt graciously with your servant according to your word. Teach me discernment and knowledge, for I have believed in your commandments. 
Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I keep your word. You are good, and you bring forth good. Instruct me in your statutes. The proud have smeared me with lies, but I will keep your commandments with my whole heart. Their heart is gross and fat, but my delight is in your law. Um, it is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn your statutes. The law of your mouth is dearer to me than the thousands of gold and silver. Okay, and our reading is from Exodus. Um, we've been continuing the story of Moses and the Israelites leaving Egypt and now wandering in the wilderness. The Lord said to Moses, Go, leave this place, you and the people whom you have brought up out of the land of Egypt, and go to the land which I um, swore to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, saying, To your descendants I will give it. I will send an angel before you, and I will drive out the Canaanites, the Amorites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. Go up to a land flowing with milk and honey, and I will not go up among you, or I would um, consume you on the way, for you are a stiff-necked people. When the people heard these harsh words, they mourned, um, and no one put on ornaments, for the Lord had said to Moses, Say to the Israelites, You are a stiff-necked people. If for a single moment I should go up among you, I would consume you. So now take off your or ornaments, and I will um, decide what to do with you. Therefore the Israelites stripped themselves of their ornaments from Mount Horeb onward. Now Moses used to take the tent and pitch it outside the camp, far off from the camp. He called it the tent of meeting, and everyone who sought the Lord would go out to the, the tent of meeting, which was outside the camp. And whenever Moses went out to the tent, all the people would rise and stand, each of them, at the entrance of their tents and watch Moses until he had gone into the tent. And when Moses entered the tent, the pillar of cloud would descend and stand at the entrance of the tent, and the Lord would speak with Moses. Uh, when all of the people saw that the pillar of cloud standing at the entrance of the tent, all the people would rise and bow down, all of them at the, the entrance of their tent. Thus the Lord used to speak to Moses face to face as one speaks to a friend. Then he would return to the camp, but his young assistant, Joshua, son of Nun, would not leave the tent. Moses said to, to the Lord, See, you have said to me, bring up, bring up this people, but you have not let me know whom you uh, will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name, and you have also found favor in my sight. Now, if I have found favor in your sight, show me your ways, so that I may know you and find favor in your sight. Consider, too, that this nation is your people, he said. My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. And he said to him, If your presence will not go, do not uh, carry us up from here, for... How shall it be known that I have found favor in your sight, I and your people, unless you go with us? In this way, uh, we shall be distinct, I and your people, from every people on the face of the earth. The Lord said to Moses, I will do the very thing that you have asked, for you have uh, found favor in my sight, and I know you by name. Moses said, Show me your glory, I pray. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before you and will proclaim before you the name, the Lord, Elohim. And I will be gracious 
to whom I will be gracious, and I will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. But, he said, you cannot see my face, for no one shall see me and live. And the Lord continued, See, there is a place by me where you shall stand on the rock, and while my glory passes by, I will put you in the cleft of the rock, and I will cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will take away my hand, and you shall see my back, but my face shall not be seen. So, the... Uh, the tent of the meeting becomes the, the continuing presence of God with the Israelite people. Um, and Moses goes into him and listens. Um, our canticle, first canticle, is um, um, Serge Illuminare 11. Rise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has dawned upon you. For behold, darkness covers the land, deep gloom enshrouds the people. But over you the Lord will rise, and his glory will appear upon you. Nations will stream to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawning. Your gates shall always be open, by day or night they will never be shut. They shall call you the city of the Lord, the Zion, the Holy One of Israel. Violence will no more be heard in your land, ruin or destruction within your borders. You will call your walls salvation and all your portals praise. The sun will no more be your light by day. By night you will not need the brightness of the moon. The Lord will be your everlasting light and your God will be your glory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Um, our second reading is from uh, the Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said, Do not think that I come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter, will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, Unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Okay, and our canticle, next canticle is Dignus S. Um, canticle 18 on page 93. Splendor and honor and sovereign power are yours by right, O Lord our God. For you created everything that is, and by your will they were created and have their being. And yours by right, O Lamb that was slain, for with your blood you have redeemed for God. From every family, language, people, and nation, a kingdom of priests to serve our God. And so to him who sits upon the throne, and to Christ the Lamb, be worship and praise, dominion and splendor, forever and forevermore. The Apostles' Creed on 96. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, and born of the Virgin Mary, he suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. 
Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness, and let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care, and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Amen. And our colic for this week is the fourth Sunday of Easter. O God, whose Son is the Good Shepherd of your sheep, grant of your people, grant that when we hear his voice, we may know him who calls us each by name, and follow where he leads, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. And you probably noticed that uh, uh, Moses was known by name, um, and Jesus expands that to everyone in the congregation is known by name. A colic for grace. Lord God, almighty, everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin, but be overcome by adversity. And in all that we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And our colic for mission, almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And we pray for the dead. Larry and Marion, Russell, Joseph, Betty, um, and Barbara. We pray for those in need of healing, um, especially those suffering from the pandemic uh, coronavirus, COVID-19 and for all those people who are assisting them. Um, may they be safe, all of them. And we pray for Jarrett and Anne and um, Eric and um, Johnny and Andrea and Sally. And we give our thanksgivings. Um, uh, as I say, the, the ontological category is plant for trees, but uh, and they're supposedly inanimate objects, but that just means they're somewhat immovable. But the ones, trees outside my window, have been blowing quite a bit this spring. The wind has been pretty good. Um, we give thanks for the creation and, uh, and for our preservation. And we, uh, and the general thanksgiving, Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. 
We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts you may we may show forth your praise not only with our lips but in our lives by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Uh, glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. And I wanted to look at one of those. Um, we bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. Um, our creation, obviously, and our preservation, and all the blessings of this life. That seems to kind of include everything in this general thanksgiving on page 101. Anyway, have a, have a good day.